The year is 1973. Here we meet Constance Webb, a pregnant woman in the Amazon searching for a very rare and special spider to use it in curing the worst diseases of humanity. With her is Ezekiel, her security guard, who strangely seems even more interested in this spider than Constance herself. He claims that this spider is very difficult to find, as he has been searching for it for decades without success. Five seconds later, the woman appears smiling with the captured spider. Happy, she shows it to everyone when Ezekiel reveals himself as a villain, killing everyone to take the spider. But he has a good motivation for it. He killed everyone there, including the woman who just wanted to help humanity, because he went hungry in his childhood. As he escapes with the spider, some humans with arachnid powers appear to help the woman. They take her to a cave, try to save her with a spider bite, but without success. However, they managed to save the baby that was in her belly. Now we are in 2003, where we meet Cassandra Webb, the surviving baby, who has now grown up and become a paramedic. She almost always works in pairs with her colleague, Ben Parker. Yes, that Ben Parker you're thinking of, the famous Uncle Ben. Even without a family, Cassandra suffers from family problems. She hates her own mother, even though she has never met her. During an incident, with her taking an extremely foolish action for a professional, she ends up falling into the water, where she starts seeing webs in some kind of astral plane. While she was having some visions, she is awakened by Ben, who had saved her. She finds it strange when Ben starts repeating the same things until she realizes that she is actually having visions of him before they even happen. In parallel to this, we continue the story of Ezekiel, the villain who now wears elegant attire and is involved with an older woman. However, we discover that he is with this woman for other interests. He often has nightmares about three spider women killing him. He approached this woman because she holds a high position in the National Security Agency. The year is 2003. Smartphones barely existed. There was no Facebook yet, let alone ChatGPT. But this agency had technology capable of recognizing faces of people wearing masks 10 years into the future and from within a dream. He uses his powers, poisons the woman, and steals her badge and password to access this technology. Cassie is in another emergency, this time a fire. There, she starts having visions of her boss dying in an ambulance and asks him to let her drive instead. He refuses and not long after, her vision becomes a reality. Back to the villain, to avoid being killed by the three spider women, he wants to find and kill them first. And of course, with the super technology provided by the scriptwriters, from a dream of the future, with the faces of the three spider women covered by masks, he actually manages to discover their identities, who are currently just unbearable teenagers. The three, by another coincidence of the script, even without knowing each other, are all on the same train, in the same car, and at the same time. And you won't believe who is also in the same car. It's her, Cassandra Webb, who starts having visions of Ezekiel, sometimes masked and sometimes unmasked, attacking the girls. When she sees Ezekiel approaching, she runs to the teenagers and tells them to get off the train. Seeing her leading the girls out of the train, the police think it's a kidnapping and arrest her. There was Cassie kneeling and the three completely helpless and clueless teenagers, but the villain ignores them and kills all the police first to give them time to escape. Cassie manages to steal a taxi, and as she is wanted for kidnapping and has a crazy maniac wanting to kill her, all she needs to do is go to the police with the three teenagers as witnesses and sort everything out. However, she has a better idea. Take them all into the wilderness. And it's there that they discover how much they have in common. They hate their parents and have all seen Cassie at least once in their lives. Extremely useful information. Glad they shared. After just surviving an assassination attempt and laughing off Cassie's ability to see the future, she leaves the three girls alone and goes home to research the spiders. She finds the notebook left by her deceased mother and to reveal what everyone already knew. She reads aloud that this special spider grants powers to people. Among her mother's documents, she comes across a photo of her late mom with none other than Ezekiel. Meanwhile, in the woods, despite Cassie telling them to wait there, the three decide to go to a diner, completely ignoring the fact that there's a masked maniac wanting to kill them. 
They decide to climb on the table of several guys they've never seen before and dance for them. A man sees a photo of the supposedly kidnapped three in a newspaper. He calls the police, and the villain, with his super technology, discovers their location. When Cassandra arrives and makes them get off the table, our hero, the villain, saves us from another unbearable dialogue between them, appearing and attacking everyone. The problem is that our dear villain must have some cognitive disorder because he hits everyone in the diner the same way he did with the police in the subway, just not the girls who were supposed to be his real target. Finally, a battle unfolds between him and Cassandra, who takes a stab, but it was all just a premonition. The girls are still dancing on the table, and Cassandra is still on her way to the diner. But this time, Ezekiel arrives first, but unfortunately, he is run over by Cassie. Even very injured, our hero still manages to inject some venom into the woman. But our hero doesn't just fight against his fate and against the four women. He also fights against the script, and they manage to escape. Despite the great initial idea of leaving the three in the woods this time, Cassie decides to take them to her apartment. She says they can spend the night there, but the next day, they need to return to their parents' homes. And again, they go back to telling the sad story of the three helpless, sad, and unloved little girls. Sometime later, without any explanation, in some kind of astral plane, Cassie and our hero have a conversation. In a scene totally nonsensical, he tells her that he wants to kill them because they will kill him and blah blah blah. After several self-explanatory dialogues from a clearly weak script, Cassie decides to go to the Amazon for information. Detail. She's in a stolen taxi, wanted for kidnapping but travels to another country without any problem. She leaves the girls with Ben, and suddenly, she's on an excursion in the Amazon forests. She ends up finding the spider men there, and a man tells her that in 1973, her mother went there seeking a cure, but was betrayed by Ezekiel and threw Cassie into the astral plane. Where now? Yes, she will discover everything because Sony provided the beginning of the movie for her to watch. She learns about her birth and that her mother went to the Amazon for the spider, mainly because at the beginning of the pregnancy, she found out that her daughter would be born with a rare neuromuscular disease that would limit her greatly in life. In the end, the disease was cured by the spider, Cassie gained powers, and her mother died. With her childhood trauma overcome, she embraces her mother in this astral plane and apologizes for hating her for so long. Now she needs to save the three girls, but lacks Ezekiel's physical strength. The man then tells her that her powers are in her mind. She just needs to learn to control them. He also drops a, with great power comes great responsibility, but in different words. Meanwhile, this woman, whom I'm not sure is Ben's wife or Peter Parker's mother, is going into labor and everyone goes to the hospital. And of course, Ezekiel, with his super technology, finds their location, prepares a grenade, and in an inexplicable scene of this ambulance jumping from the third floor of this building, Cassie runs him over. Note that she would miss the target, but as our hero is a good person and didn't want to let her go through this shame, he helps her by jumping towards the car. She saves Ben and the pregnant woman, but Ezekiel starts chasing the three girls. However, we discover that Cassie binge-watched all the Fast and Furious movies because she's driving better than Vin Diesel. Finally, we reach the super final battle, which boils down to Cassie predicting all of Ezekiel's moves. When the girls are almost dying, Cassie remembers the phrase, with great power comes great responsibility and manages to control her powers, saving the girls and defeating our hero. But before that, she still tortures him with a catchy phrase implying that he was wrong to fear the future with the three girls, when in fact, she would be the one causing his death. In the end, she falls into the water, is saved by the girls, and when she wakes up, her eyes are different. The probable Peter Parker is born, and now Cassie and the girls have become a family. The movie ends with Madame Webb telling the girls that great things await them in the future.